James Z. Buzzard, and I know a few weeks ago we talked about the newly announced Sony ZV-E10. And at the time, I was definitely not sold on the camera, um, specifically because I already own the Sony ZV-1, and it was already doing everything that I needed it to do, minus a couple small gripes. But, however, the Sony ZV-1 is an amazing camera. So when the Sony ZV-E10 was announced, I wasn't super, super excited about it. But over the past month that I've actually, you know, been contemplating whether or not to order the Sony ZV-E10, the few couple gripes that I had with the ZV-1 were really starting the show, specifically the battery life and the fact that you cannot change the lenses. Um, there's a lot of times when I'm filming with the Sony ZV-1 where I do just want to grab this, grab it with the handle. Sorry, I can't demo it right now. I'm actually using it as an overhead rig. Shh. That doesn't mean anything. There's no unboxing coming up or anything like that. Um, anyway, so when you're holding the ZV-1 out in front of you, sometimes you do feel like you're really just trying to shove it as far out there as you can, you know what I mean? To really get the framing that you want. And the Sony ZV-E10 is just gonna obviously solve that issue right then and there, it, depending on what lens you uh, end up throwing on it. So, your boy ended up going out and grabbing the brand new Sony ZV-E10 just a couple days ago so that we can actually put this thing to the test and see is this really an awesome camera for vloggers, for content creators, for people looking to start a YouTube channel, for businesses looking to start creating content for themselves. This is what the Sony ZV-1 does extremely, extremely well, is social media content, digital online content, um, and stuff for small businesses, stuff for uh, small time content creators. It was an uh, amazing camera to start off with, and it definitely hands down still is but I wanted to try this thing out and give it a fair chance so not only did I get the Sony ZV-E10 but just to really give it a fair go I went ahead and got the Sony 8 10 to 18 millimeter now this 10 to 18 millimeter is one of the widest lenses that you guys can get for the Sony crop sensor line of cameras so this is about as fair of a chance as you can give this thing and a huge leg up over the Sony ZV-1 having the, the, the fact that you can interchange lenses and you can put something like the 10 to 18 on here because this camera with the uh, actual, this camera with the actual kit lens it's no different than the actual Sony ZV-1. And in fact, the kit lens, you're actually gonna be letting in less light and uh, you're gonna have a higher f-stop, especially once you guys factor in that crop factor. So let's go ahead and actually unbox, let's set this to the side. And let's do a super quick unboxing of the Sony ZV-E10. I don't wanna waste a ton of your guys' time today. Let's check this thing out, uh, get it out of the box. That way I can start playing with it over the next couple weeks and really give you guys a good rundown of not only all my settings, how I'm using the camera, what lenses are good. We're gonna be going over everything with this camera. Let's go ahead and bust this thing out of the box. So the first thing you guys are gonna notice is it comes with a strap let's go ahead and toss that right there we also get a brand new sony np fw50 if you want the full technical name or you could just call it the w50 battery or the w batteries that is the uh medium sized sony battery the zv1 comes with actually a smaller battery than this and the uh bigger sony cameras or the sony a line of cameras and the sony a6600 all come with that z size battery up next we got the usb for your guys's camera this thing does not come with a charger so you guys are going to need to charge it via USB and this little uh, 
charging bricky thing. I always forget what to call these things, but it does come with an AC power adapter. There we go. Let's get to the actual meat and potatoes of this package. Let's get this thing out of the way. And here we go. I love having that first unboxing experience myself. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's go. Oh man. Oh gosh. Check that out. Let's go. This thing is tiny. Wow, this is a super, super compact and small camera. So in a minute, we'll actually bust out the ZV-1 and we'll do a direct size comparison. But just my first... Nice, very nice. The screen actually feels thinner. It feels thinner than normal. I don't know why that is, but it does feel thinner. I'm not saying it is. That's nice. It swings out very nice. It has a nice hinge on there. It really does. Um, anyways, let's check out the, uh, this is actually a fantastic lens. I know I kind of knocked it in our Sony ZV-E10 video because of the f-stop and it also is not a constant f-stop. At least the Sony ZV-1 is a constant uh, f2.8 all the way through, which is kind of important for video shooters. However, as uh, beginner content creators, that's not a huge deal. This lens is a fantastic lens, extremely, extremely compact. Um, so yeah, that is a, an awesome lens. So this is the camera itself. This is what you guys can expect to get if you guys are thinking about ordering this bad boy. Um, this honestly, I think is going to be my recommended camera, this and the Sony ZV-1, depending on if you guys need the interchangeable lens feature or not. Um, and if you guys are doing a lot of content that's not like literally vlog, hold it out in front of you style, the ZV-1 is probably going to be the go-to um, because of the price and this camera really was actually pretty expensive, especially once you figure it, factor in uh, starting to buy some lenses for it. Um, like I said in my past video, as soon as you guys get this camera, you're going to want to get a lens for it, just like I did. I, w I went and got the uh, 10 to 18. This is one of the one of the more reasonable Sony brand lenses. You could go with the Sigma 16 millimeter. That's around 400 bucks. Um, you guys could go with the the uh, 16 millimeter f 2.8 but then again you guys are still going to be dealing with that same uh the crop factor issue where it's going to be punched into a 24 if you guys are using active track stabilization and walking around with the camera um it's just going to be pretty tight uh it's the framing is going to be pretty tight on you so Again, you guys are probably gonna wanna get something like the 10 to 18, the Tamron 11 to 20, um, but you guys are probably gonna want a lens wider than 16 millimeters, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys. So anyways, let's go ahead and unbox this lens. Uh, this lens was pretty pricey, to be honest, um, but I really wanted to give this camera a fair shake. Um, and I feel like to do that, I needed a lens that was wider than the uh, 16 millimeters that comes on the, uh, the kit lens or, you know, even the 16 F 2.8 that you guys could get from Sony. Um, you know, either way, your guys are going to be uh, not quite as wide as you guys want to be with a 16 millimeter on a uh, crop on a crop sensor body. Let's check out this 10 to 18 because this is honestly I'm just as excited for this lens particularly as I am for the camera itself. So let's go ahead and pop this guy on here real quick. This is a very, very, very light lens. The whole combo, the whole kit setup everything is super 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 light with it so anyways i'm sure that this battery that came with the camera is not charged so i'm gonna go over here and grab a different w50 battery 
one that should be charged. I always get the battery position mixed up because on all of the Z batteries, the little terminals, you know, face outward. On the W batteries, the terminals face inward. <laughs> so, all right, guys, and we are in business. Now, I will tell you that this F4 lens is quite dark. Um, in my basement, I definitely need a decent amount of light to get any kind of good image down here. So, um, let's pop this bad boy. This is in intelligent auto. Let's get this in manual real quick. I just want to just want to give it my first impressions. <laughs> wow, that looks good. That looks good. That's what I want. That's what I want with the 10 millimeter right there. Wow, I'm just right here and look at that field of view. That is beautiful. Okay, anyways, guys, that is it for the unboxing of all this stuff. Actually, actually, I got one more thing to unbox. I grabbed an extra battery for this little guy. So let's just get this thing open. I got one extra battery. I happen to have some extra W50 batteries here because one of my buddies left his uh, two of his cameras here. Um, it's actually his original A7. Let me grab them, because they're super cool. Anyways, this is the original Sony A7. Super cool camera. This is the one that started it all for the Sony A7 line. Um, so, yeah, this is a sick, sick camera. Sony's first mirrorless camera. The one that changed the game for mirrorless cameras. So it's pretty cool having this in the office. And this is uh, the other camera that I had a W50 battery for. This is just the A6300 with the uh, 12 millimeter on here, Rokinon lens. This does not have autofocus or anything like this or anything like that. And this, this has a really smooth focus pull though. Anyways, that, those are the two cameras. Uh, those are the two older cameras that I got the W50 batteries in. But anyways, this camera is super, super, super sick. So I almost forgot before we, before we do it, let's grab the Sony ZV-1. And let's just do a super quick comparison to the Sony ZV-1 with how I normally have my Sony ZV-1 set up, just so we can get a size comparison for the two. I was actually just using this as like a little overhead rig. I just use a little clamp and have this mounted vertically with the uh, the camera straight onto there. And that's how I got the vertical shot for this video. I don't have like an overhead rig or anything like that. This is the Sony ZV-1. We're gonna put it at its widest. That way the lens is sticking out super far. And damn, these cameras are really, really close in size. Once you put a grip or something on the Sony ZV-1, which most people are probably gonna wanna put a grip or something on there just so it's not so small because honestly this camera I feel like I'm I'm pinching it like this when I when I don't have a grip on it so having the grip on it actually makes it a lot more comfortable to use and it still gets super super small when you have it all compact and size wise these cameras are extremely extremely similar in size um, you guys can see kind of front to back I don't have the overhead rig right now obviously but you guys can kind of see front to back they're very very similar especially with that grip on there I know you're not supposed to put it with the sensor up but it's all right for now just for the video you know I almost forgot we got a little wind muffy in here I call them wind muffies instead of dead cats because they muffle the wind if you're curious <clears throat> Anyways, 
dope camera, super dope setup. Let me ask you guys one question before I let you guys get out of here. Should I use this at tomorrow's wedding or should I use the A7C as my B cam like I normally would? Or should we go ahead and give this camera a chance for tomorrow? I think it would be a pretty cool setup with the Sony uh, 24 to 105 along with this 10 to 18 millimeter. I think we could get some pretty cool shots on it, especially with the active track stabilization, which now that I'm actually noticing it, yeah. Okay, this is gonna be fun with a 10 millimeter and active track. I can tell you that right now. I am turning this off, I'm turning that off. Anyways, that is all I have for today's video. Let me know how you guys ended up liking the Sony ZV-E10. Let me know if the 10 to 18 millimeter is gonna be your guys' first pickup with your guys' new Sony ZV-E10. And, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. for that YouTube algorithm. So if you guys are still here, definitely make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, only because it helps with that YouTube algorithm. And your boy is three, three subscribers away from 500. So definitely hit that subscribe button so that, you know, I can, I can celebrate that 500 win. But anyways, anyways, thanks for being here. I'll see you guys. Thank you.